What's going on guys? Chuck here with another awesome Blu-ray purchase. Uh, today, I don't have anything specific. Um, I just have a lot of uh, titles that I've picked up here recently. Um, whether it be from sales, there's been a lot of sales going on. I know, especially Aquino had a big Easter I think, sale they had, which I took advantage of. Um, and a few other sales here and there. And just stuff I picked up off the cuff at random, just, you know, just because I thought about, hey, I should pick that up. And looked it up, there it was. <laughs> So I thought I'd, sh I'd just share those with you right now. Um, so without further ado, because this could be a, this could take a while if you've seen some of my previous uh, um, pickups videos, you know what it's like. So we'll start with um, kind of one-off random, uh, one-off studios, I guess. Um, first of all, this was a, for some reason I just had a, I don't know why this movie came up in my mind. But I was thinking about it and I decided I should, you know, is this even available? Is this one of these, you know... 70s comedies that's not really talked about, and that was the end with Burt Reynolds and Don DeLuise. And uh, it was available, obviously. Uh, this is from Olive Films, so you know it's not available anymore. <laughs> or what you can find is going to be, you know, uh, scarce if it isn't already. Um, and this was basically one I haven't seen in a long, long time, but some reason, like I said, I don't know why I thought about it, but I just did and maybe wanted to see if it was out there to pick it up. Uh, basically, Burt Reynolds is playing a guy who's memory serves, who realizes who's been told he has you know he's gonna die. He has you know so much time to live. He decides he just wants to kind of go out on his own terms, and he's hanging out with a uh, mental patient Dom DeLuise, and he's basically trying to help him kill himself. And, and hilarity ensues. Uh, there's probably more to that. Obviously, that's just a quick gist of it from what I can remember. Um, but I always liked Dom DeLuise and Burt Reynolds together. And it seemed like, you know, I said, I don't know why. I can't remember what brought it up across my mind when me think of it. But I just wanted to see if it was out there and get it. And here it is. Uh, next up was a Severin title. One that it released that I, you know, for a while back, but I wasn't sure. Not a while back, but I wasn't sure if I was picking this up. It's like an Australian film. It's a Bloody Moon. Um, really what tr triggered me this was the whole, um, what is this? It's supposed to come with the, oh my, the Fright Break Challenge. Uh, first time ever. Um, I guess, again, this is an you know, Australian exploitation film. Um, slasher. Uh, they had the gimmick of, like I said, the Fright Break Challenge. Basically, it's too scary. They, you have to, you know, you can't chance to leave or some, something or other like that. Um, so, yeah, that, is, that was, just, I love gimmicky kind of things. As you'll see later on, <laughs> it just seemed like what the heck? Why not? I love also a little good slasher, um, especially you know obscure one like trying like finding new ones, um, and this just seemed like a, a fun one to pick up. And then the last was from this little quick one off was a vinegar syndrome. I went through their sales. Um, what I know the, the vinegar syndrome sales actually now there's not a whole lot that I haven't already picked up <laughs> as a hell of a sale, but I finally got one. That I was always on the fence about. I've seen it. You know, it's entertaining. I know a lot of people love this movie. It's one advantage. I actually got to see the drive-in, too. And I saw first time I saw it was on uh, the last drive-in. <laughs> and that is Spookies. Um, a lot of people were saying, well, Spookies? You got, why did you wait so long to get Spookies? Um, I wasn't really quite sure. I mean, it's, it's entertaining. It's fun. But it was something I really wanted to get. I don't know. But... I think, and this happens to me a lot, watching uh, Christian Hannah Horror, Horror, <laughs> uh, he was talking about Spookies, I believe, and so he brought up a documentary on here about the making of the Spookies, which actually is very good, and he hyped it up a lot. And I think actually May Pizzow might have done the same thing earlier than when it was first released. And I just, you know, they just sold it so well. And I love a good documentary on the behind the scenes. Uh, especially the movie with such a troubled production as Spookies. Um, so that was really the selling point for me was to get that to get a documentary. And I watched the documentary and it was very good. It's just as good as they uh, hyped it up to be. And it's really interesting just everything that went through with this movie. And it's, it's fun. Like I said, I was lucky enough to see this at the drive-in uh, a couple years back. They played it. So it's 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 a fun movie. And then the, the, the creature effects in here are are great. Uh, story is a mess, but if you watch a documentary from the history, you know why. But it's still an enjoyable time, so that's always a plus. 
Now, I'll take you to some studio titles that I just picked up um, recently. The Iron Claw, the you know Von Erich family tragedy story, um, story of tragedy, however you want to put it. This one I was well looking forward to because um, this, you know, obviously if you're as a wrestling fan, you know the Von Erichs are well known, and their tragedy, their tragic, you know, story, family story is, um, it's really it's it, it is made for film, I guess, because it's so heartbreaking. It seems like it wouldn't be real life, but it's it is, um. My thoughts on the film, I really enjoyed this movie a lot. Now, obviously, there were some things that I, I have some issues with. And uh, the casting is... Uh, and they did say, first of all, preface it, they did say that they didn't cast the film based on appearances, but more on who was the right character for part. And I think they did a good job with that. Because everyone does a fine job in the performance. And most of these actors I don't know, except for, obviously, um, Zac Efron. And who was it? Uh... uh Lily James, um, the two I, that I really know. I know her from Mamma Mia, Here We Go Again. <laughs> uh, but they have great performances. Um, one thing I had a hard time with, you know, was they're pretending, you know, the the wrestling, you know, almost like they were, they couldn't make up the mind if it was a shoot or if it was a work sometimes. And you're kind of confusing how they portray that, but that's a minor thing. Um, some of the casting for the, Wrestlers were a little off, especially the Ric Flair. The Ric Flair was a little suspect. Um, I know there's a lot of people talk about uh, why, um, which one is it? Uh, God, was it Chris Von Erich wasn't included. You know, he's kind of, uh, well, he's not kind of, he really, he's just totally omitted from the film. And it was the youngest brother. Um, and I think the director, I read someone say that he, he worked on this film for years and the script and had so much stuff in it, but. Uh, he kind of took it out for the, the pacing or, or the reasons that it was too similar to Carrie's um, tragic end or something, you know, along those lines, you know, right or wrong, I don't know. Um, but also, you know, there's only so much, you know, tragedy you can take in one movie. <laughs> and it all comes very quickly. But, you know, as, as a film, as a, if you take away that, you know, um, as a film as a whole, I think it's enjoyable. I, I liked it. I was, you know, gripped emotionally. And I thought it was great performances. The wrestling performances are really great. You got Chavo Guerrero, who was a you know coordinator for the film. I liked it a lot. Um, if you're a wrestling fan, I think you should check it out. And like I said, there's gonna be some things that are gonna be like that's doesn't match up or that doesn't fly. But you know, you throw it out the window, just watch it as a movie itself. I think it's you'll you'll enjoy it. Um, next up was the 4K pickup from Paramount, Beverly Hills Cop Three, um, my least favorite. Of the Bell Hills Cop films, and I love the Bell Hills Cop films that I talked about before. Um, but I got the first two on 4K, so I, was, I had to get the third one, upgrade my DVD to the 4K. Especially that uh, the Bell Hills Cop Axel F, why it's also called Bell Hills Cop 4. I really hate that. <laughs> it's coming Netflix, and I'm really excited to see that because it does look like a return to form. Even though it's, you probably, it does look very action y, but I think, you know, with the addition of some of the original characters. It's, it has promised to be better than three because three just feels like the oddball when you look at one and two. But still, Bill Hills Cop, it's Axel Foley. I still enjoy it. Next up, one of my favorites, uh, especially this time of year, baseball season getting started. I'm a big baseball fan and Major League. I love this movie. Um, and it's just released 4K. This movie I will watch. Uh, Beginning of the baseball season every year. And I like, you know, all three of the films. Even Back to the I really like Major League Back to the Minors. Not many people like that. I really enjoy it. I think I actually like Back to the Minors more than Major League 2. And maybe it's because Scott Bakula. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. But it's something about that Back to the Minors that I really like a lot. That not many people, like I said, do. But still, none of them can top the original Major League. And I'm so glad that, you know, like I said, I just had... Well, actually, I had the DVD and then I just bought... Um, a Blu-ray last year because I watched a DVD prior to the last baseball season uh, and we watched it on projector and I'm like this again I think I mentioned before about other movies I want to watch a DVD on the projectors that we could do better <laughs> because it was just it just didn't look so I upgraded the Blu-ray and then lo and behold they announced the 4K and I think this is 
35th anniversary edition 4K. So this is going. I haven't looked chance chance to watch it yet. It's coming soon. Here we are already a couple weeks in the baseball. So a little, baseball season a little late. Um, but you know, I got my own baseball, you know, with Chris <laughs> going on right now. So we're trying to find time to do that. But I'm looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, my last another Paramount, um, and this was a big one for me. And it also, it's an upgrade to my best picture collection, and that is the Godfather trilogy 4K. Now, about a year or two ago, I did pick up the this box set, but I got the Blu-ray because I didn't have a 4K player, so I had the. Uh, Blu-ray set of this, which it's interesting because this is a much better set than the uh, Blu-ray, obviously. But with well, the Blu-ray, I think was just one. I believe it was just like one book uh, with the movies inside. Where at least this one, you've got all three individually, uh, which is nice. Plus your separate bonus disc, which I don't think the Blu-ray came with. Um, I don't remember, but so I finally I've been wanting to do it for a while, and just finally had the the money to pick it up and upgrade. Um, see, these are great movies. Like I said, it's a nice upgrade um, to my Best Picture collection, which I'm steadily going through and upgrade set up. Before, I've said before, I have a lot of those on DVD. So I'm trying to get most of those upgrade to Blu-ray. In some cases, if they had them on DVD, I can get upgrade to 4K straight away. That's even better. And, you know, in this case, it went from DVD to Blu-ray to 4K. So it hit all the... <laughs> and I had it on VHS before then. So... This is, you know, really good, and again, I love these movies. And I like, I like the third one. It's not as good as one or two, obviously, but I still enjoy Godfather Part Three. Um, as far as the, the coda, the Death of Michael Corleone um, cut, it's not much different, honestly. I mean, I have to go back and watch it. I did see that when it, you know, at first because I had that one separate by itself when it first released. I don't know. I mean, there's some changes here and there. I I, I don't think it's, it, it changes enough to really change the movie. The movie's still pretty much the same movie. Um, but I know it's Francis Ford Coppola's preferred cut. But all the versions are on there, so that's a plus. Okay. Moving on, we'll take to... Let's see. the Some stuff from Warner Archive. And <laughs> this first one... It's funny because this is one I picked up um, because of my recent stay at the hospital. If you recall, some about a month or so back when I was laid up in the hospital uh, for a couple weekends with that bad cellulitis. Uh, during my second stay, when I actually was admitted, and I was sitting, laying in bed on a Saturday all alone, it was like, <laughs> uh, was very stir crazy. I actually watched some TV and I scrolled scroll the channels. And I came across Selena and watched it. And, you know, that was a good night, actually, because I watched Selena. Um, and then uh, what came up? Um, oh, my goodness. The Tom Lee Jones movie. Um, a Double Indemnity. No, was it Double Indemnity? No, not Double Indemnity. Um, oh, my God. It's uh, Ashley Judd, Tom Lee Jones. Um, it's going to hit me later on. I know it is. <laughs> Um, basically the, the, it's where she's committed for murder of her husband, double jeopardy. That's it. And then after that was Shawshank Redemption. It was a good night. Uh, but anyways, I was watching Selena and I remember I hadn't seen that movie in a long time. And I know I had the VHS tape and I thought I had the DVD, but apparently I did not in the VHS. I mean, I gave to my ex. She's the one, you know, we went, saw it and she really liked it. And I think I just, when she left, I let her have that VHS. One of the few movies I gave away. <laughs> but I was watching, like, I should, why don't I have that? And so, went to Warner Archive and paid the Blu-ray of Selena, which, if you're not familiar with Selena, it's, you know, she's a uh, Mexican, you know, uh, Hispanic singer who was murdered by her, the president of her fan club. At the, really at her prime, a very young, you know, uh, talent that was taken away too, too way too early. A very tragic story, but um, one of Jennifer Lopez's earliest roles, actually, might have been her first. I'm not sure. But she's really good in this, but you got also Edward James Olmos, which is interesting, actually, I think about it coming up, <laughs> what I have up here next. But I really like this. It was a lot uh, more enjoyable than I actually should remember. So I said, watching in the, in the hospital, I'm like, 
man, I should have this. Why don't I have this? So I have it. <laughs> now, speaking of Edward James Olmos, another uh, Warner Archive release. This came out just very recently. Uh, was Stan and Deliver, the true story of the school teacher Jaime Escalante um, and his, you know, I, was it calculus students or some math? I can't remember what they were. Um, with Lou Diamond Phillips. I really love this movie. And I had like an old Warner Brother snapper case uh, DVD. And I don't even think it was widescreen. I believe it was pan and scan. So I was really excited that Warner Archive is put this out in this nice Blu-ray. Um, it's got nothing special. It's strictly, I mean, it's Warner Archive. You're not going to get, it's, it's very, you get too much with it. But you know, I really like this movie. I'm really glad they have it um, really released it. You know, you have, uh, who else is in this? Hank, no. Um, I can't, you know, I'm drop, drawing a blank here. Along with, you know, Ludan Phillips, Edward James Olmos, Andy Garcia. That's the other person I'm thinking of. That's in this film. Um, now, there's another film kind of on the same lines that I have uh, with Morgan Freeman's Lean On Me. Uh, I saw that DVD. I didn't find out that they have a Blu-ray for that or maybe Warner Bros. Because I think it's Warner Bros. film also. I think I have it in a snapper case. It's also full screen. Um, maybe Warner Archive can you know grab that one and release it. I'd like to get that one again. Uh, these next two are more Best Picture upgrades. And as uh, 1935's Mutant on the Bounty with uh, Charles Lawton and Clark Gable. Um, uh, this is basically just a um, reissue of the DVD, but you know, upgraded to Blu-ray, which is nice. Because, yeah, one of those old snapper cases from Warner Brothers, so it's nice to get this. And uh, Paul Muni and The Life of Mila Zola, 1937, Best Picture winner. Nice to get those upgraded, get rid of you know, the DVDs, and I said, you know, amp up my Best Picture collection. Um, let's see. Next up, um, some Arrow stuff. And this is stuff actually... Couple of these I just got today uh, from uh, was a sale that Arrow was having, and I picked up Madhouse uh, Video Nasty. You know, again, just randomly picking up a few here and there, trying to you know have a small collection of Video Nasties. Um, not all of them. I mean, some of them are just whatever I can. I don't really go out necessarily and. Trying to find some ones. If they're, if they're affordable and I can get them, what the heck, I'll pick them up. And this is one of them. Really glad to get this. Um, next up was Deadly Games. And it was still in limited edition. Now, this had been out for a while, and I didn't really know much about it. Um, I was really actually watching uh, the uh, 80s project uh, from Movie Timelines. I've mentioned it before. Uh, the most recent episode, they covered Deadly Games. And actually, once I saw really what it was about, and I was like, okay, this is something actually I might want to check out. Because initially, I didn't think it was. Not knowing too much about it. Um, and I went on Arrow. They had it on sale. And I still had a limited edition with a slipcover. So I snagged it, and there you go. <laughs> this last one was one was an upgrade to uh, Blu-ray that I had. And this was one I used some rewards points from Arrow to pick up. It's a movie I really liked, and I had really hoped actually it would win Best Picture. Um, and I, what won that year? I believe it was Birdman uh, that won, but it's Boyhood, and this is the 4K edition. I don't know if this was. I think this was. Yeah, this is actually um, from Arrow UK because I don't think they released this in the uh, states. I don't think, but it's one I wasn't able to. Um, I didn't pick up right away. Again, no 4K player. Um, so I never did. But going back, and I set some points, and Arrow actually still had this available in the limited edition set. So I used it and, and picked it up. And I'm you know glad because I really do uh, love this movie. And I, I like the way or the whole concept behind it. If you're not familiar, Richard Linklater, of course, he directed uh, Days Confused. Um, it basically tells the story of, you know, this family with Patricia Arquette who won an Oscar for this. Uh, this boy, he's, I can't remember his name right now. It's been a while since I've seen it. But he, you know, this film, this has, it, actually, you're watching him grow up literally, you know, as the film goes on from little boy all the way up to, you know, a, a young adult. And it's fascinating, you know, obviously, you know, the, the years it took to make this film and, you know, filming, you know, a, a, couple or weekends here every couple years as he's watching these kids 
you know, grow and adult and go through their whole life um, in real time. In, in essence, it's fascinating, and I think it's it's a, it's a really interesting concept, and it's a lot of work. You got to think about what you're dealing with. At least, you know, I think I don't know how old he is when he starts, but he's a real little kid, and he's obviously by the time he's done, he's 18, 19, possibly 20, he's going to college. So you know, basically elementary school all through college. So that's a good, you know, 16, 17 years of this kid's life. You're filming, and you know, it's a drama. It's not a documentary, so it's a written script. But it's how you know, watching again, you know, these different. And it's there's not really a plot, nonetheless. It's basically vignettes in each you know point of stage of this boy's life. But it's 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 really good. I mean, it's. I, Again, it's just the whole concept of it is fascinating to me, and I think it's done really well, and I really enjoy this movie. So if you haven't checked it out, check out Boyhood. I highly recommend it. Um, Okay, let's see. What do I want to? Okay, we'll go with these uh, Screen Factory stuff. Um, and one I picked, actually, this one is out of print. I had to find this, and it was Demented. Uh, another video nasty, um, and this is one that always got my attention whenever I'd see this trailer. Something about a rape revenge um, kind of movie, in a way, but not really. Um, but what I found fascinating is this, it actually has Harry Reams uh, playing the male lead in this film. Of course, Harry Reams is an adult film star, or was an adult film star, most notably for um, The Devil in Miss Jones and Deep Throat. But he plays, you know, the husband of the woman in here who's basically, she's uh, been assaulted and she's kind of just totally traumatized with the event. And, you know, husband messed around on her, didn't really care. But, you know, basically there's a point where it comes and she just snaps because she's demented. <laughs> demented. <laughs> and it's it's fun. Um, there's not a whole lot to it, but it's... Interesting, again, it's, it's something that trailer always caught my attention, and the fact that Harry was in it, that's why I picked it up. Uh, next up was, I think this is a Shout Factory or exclusive, um, Revenge of the Cheerleaders. <laughs> um, yeah, you can just tell by looking at this, this is just... It's, you know, some kind of, what was it, late 70s, early 80s. I'm not sure what year was this. Like, find it here. Oh, 76. So, the mid-70s, kind of like a, from what the trailer shows, like a teen sex comedy, um, which I've mentioned before, I love those kind of films. I love finding obscure ones. Um, and this was cool because it actually has <laughs> David Hasselhoff. A very early, early appearance of David Hasselhoff. So, that struck me as funny. And, and it seemed like, what the heck, grab it. Um, next up, and again, some of these were also part of their going out of print soon. Um, and this next one I picked up was Survive. Um, this is a Spanish exploitation film, uh, basically about the famous, was it, um, uh, Andy's uh, plane crash of the rugby who, who was it? The in the Andes Mountains of um, I forget was it Chilean? Is it Chilean rugby team? I can't remember. You know, basically crashed in the Andes Mountains and had to resort to you know cannibalism to survive. A more popular movie was made called Alive, but many years later, this is like you know I think seventies early eighties, seventy six also capitalizing on the event. And um, one reason I got this was. Again, the trailer. Uh, I first saw this trailer on one of my Forty uh, Second Street volume collections. I think it might be the first or second one, and it just it grabbed my attention because of its subject matter. Um, and I, and knowing there was you know obviously a bigger budget, more well known version, and this one just seemed like interesting. Plus, it's a kind of exploitation. So you, it, I don't think it's really using. The actual names and people, it's more like inspired by true events kind of thing. And we're going to just do the whole thing, but we're going to change the names. And that'll, that's a, a tactic that will show up here shortly again in a different movie. And I'll kind of along the same lines of this. Um, 
But it's just something that I just, I really wanted to get and to have and check out. Um, because it was something interesting and the whole premise of it seemed cool. So there is Survive. Um, the last one I got, um, and this is a movie I always heard about and I did see this on YouTube a couple years ago. Um, and it's based off of it was a Clive Cussler novel. Um, and that is Raise the Titanic. Now, uh, obviously, you know, I have an, uh, affinity for, uh, the Titanic. And again, this will, this subject will pop up here shortly again. <laughs> um, and, but this, this always struck me crazy because the whole concept of trying to raise the ship to the surface is just ludicrous. <laughs> if you think about, you know, how deep it is in the ocean, the pressure and just the, you know, the high, whole process is just asinine really. <laughs> Um, obviously, this is like a whole, you know, Russian spy kind of thing, and, you know, the, the reason why the whole raising it in the first place. But what's interesting about this, of course, this is filmed in, um, this came out, we'll have a year on here. Um, I want to say like late 70s, maybe, no, 1980. Okay, 1980. So this is five years before Robert Ballard found the Titanic wreck in 1985. So, you know, no one knows at this point where the Titanic's at. Uh, no one knows its condition. So they're basically making this all up on the fly. And, and in this movie, they have the whole conceit that the ship is still in one piece in fairly good shape, even being down the bottom of the ocean for however long it had been at that point. Which, obviously, five years later, Ballard would discover the wreck and realize the ship was split in two. Um, separated by about a, you know, a couple miles apart from each other and not in the best condition. So it's, I find that fascinating, you know, the, what people thought about, you know, at the time uh, before, you know, the actual uh, wreckage was found. But it's still, it's it's a fun, enjoyable movie if you get past the nonsense. But, and I, you know, the John Barry score is great, as it usually is, especially in the scenes where they... Spoiler alert, raise a Titanic. <laughs> it's, but it's still crazy, but yeah, why not? Okay, so now we get into the big chunk of this, um, I think, and that was the Kino Over Easter sale they had. Um, they had a lot of time. They were selling a lot of stuff at really reduced prices. I mean, almost everything I, on this sale was about between 9 and $7 a piece. Uh, with the exception of any 4Ks. The 4Ks were cut in half, but they were still about 15 So they were still pretty cheap for what they usually... Because Kino Lover stuff is usually a little little pricey sometimes. Not always, but sometimes. But I went through this, and I grabbed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> uh, because it was so cheap. And there's some stuff I wanted to get for a while. And some stuff were just like, well, hell, that's only 7 bucks. Why not pick it up? Uh, <laughs> uh, first off, and this is an example of what's only 7 bucks. pick it up and... You know, I like gimmicky stuff. Uh, Revenge of the Shogun Women in 3D. Uh, 3D, that's all I have to say. You know, uh, as I've stated before on this channel, um, I do like collecting Blu-ray 3Ds, uh, 3D films. And I joy, especially, you know, joy watching with a projector. And now that I have the, the capability to watch these movies, it's a lot of fun to try and find as many as I can and check them out. And this just seems crazy. Um, I mean, look at that. I don't even know what it's about, but it just looks really crazy and, and, and messed up. I didn't see... This includes both the Blu-ray 3D and Polarize and Anaglyph uh, 3D versions and 2D version. And I believe... Yep. This one actually comes with a pair of the crappy red and blue glasses. Don't need these, but it's cool it comes with them. But only one pair, so... Only one person gets to watch movie at a time. Um, and it's also got uh, three three D shorts, college capers, Persian slave market, and two guys from Tick Ridge. Again, no idea what this movie's about, but it was in three D. It was like nine bucks. I said, let's do it. <laughs> Along those same lines, uh, we got <laughs> Ape in three D. Now I know the reputation of this movie is awful, uh, terribly bad. 
horribly bad. Uh, going back to, uh, I watched those at, uh, uh, was it Brandon Tennell's cult movie review channel, and he talks about this, and it's hilarious. So one of the reasons why I had to pick it up, and again, because it's in 3D. And it stars Joanna Kearns, you know, Maggie Seaver from Growing Pains. Um, and it just looks ape shit. <laughs> it's crazy. Um, another, again, the main selling point is it was cheap. It's in real 3D. You know, I'm a sucker for that, so why not pick it up? Um, and all I've got here is audio commentary and trailer. But that's about it. Okay. Uh, next up, another video, Nasty. And it's one I, you know, again, I want to see the trailer for this. It's kind of caught my attention, one I really want to check out for the longest time, actually. Um, and I keep saying, well, I'll get that, I'll get that, I'll get that. Finally, uh, with this sale, be down like $9 or things, $8 or $9. And I said, okay, now you're finally going to get it. That is Campbell Apocalypse with John Saxon. Um, from what I understand, this is like, you know, uh, some Vietnam veterans who uh, had a slight cannibalistic episode in the war, they're traumatized by it, and eventually everyone gonna turn to cannibal. That's just a gesture from giving the trailer. I don't know. I've yet to see this movie. But um, it looks really good. Again, it's John Saxon. It's always fun. And you've got to see auto commentary. How you Cannibal Apocalypse Redux, Redo, the, the documentary, which sounds interesting. An interview with... Uh, Tony King and Apocalypse in the Streets, a video tour of filming locations, and alternate opening title sequences. I think it's had a different title. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. Nothing on here. But this was, again, one I've been wanting to get for a while, and it was marked down so low. This is my chance to get it. Um, next up, I'll say that one, is, uh, <laughs> a, again, this is a movie I was thinking about I one day. Oh, I know what I know what it was because I was I was back watching uh, some of my um, trailer compilations, and uh, this movie you know this was happening a lot of movies pop up and made me think of it, and this was one of them. It popped up, and that's Convoy, Chris Christopherson, and it was Ali. Who is it? Um, um, Ali McGraw, I believe it is. Um, famous song. <laughs> And it's a movie that, oof, probably during the big trucker craze, yeah, obviously the, the song is a, a trucker anthem. It's, if you ever, the song Convoy, it's it's a trucker song. And I say that there's a certain genre that I don't know if it's, I don't think it's around anymore. I remember a friend of mine had these, you know, some uh, musicians who just did trucker songs. And they were storytellers. It's kind of like a country western, but. They just tell these stories, and that's basically what Convoy is this, you know, story uh, in a song, and they just made it to a movie, or vice versa. I'm not really sure which, <laughs> but it's one I just always wanted to pick up, and for years, you know, again, there it was, cheap. This is my chance to finally pick it up, and I did. Um, let's see. Next up was just a silly, again, cheap, why not, National Lampoon's Movie Madness. I don't really have anything about this other than it's like, why not? It's cheap. <laughs> Seems like a good idea. Don't know too much about it. It's not a National Lampoon film that people will talk about. But why not? So there you go. Um, this next one is kind of along the same lines as Survive. And it was uh, one I saw in the trailer on the 42nd Street. Um, and it's a film based on actual tragic events, um, which in and itself is, the, the event this is based on is just fascinating uh, to go and research and just, and horrific all at the same time. Um, and that is Guyana, Cult of the Damned. Obviously, this is the story of Jamestown, or Jonestown, excuse me. In the film, it's called Jamestown because... Uh, this is what I'm talking about. It's the exact, I mean, everything, is, I've seen this film. Everything in this film was basically telling the story of, you know, Jim Jones, Jonestown, everything, but they're changing the names to like Jamestown, or Jamestown instead of Jim uh, Jonestown. Uh, let's see, if they have, what is his name? 
what they use in here. I don't remember what they're calling them, but it's basically, I mean, it's, it's obviously, I mean, look at it, it's obviously, we're talking about Jim Jones, but he's, you know, something, James Johnson or something. <laughs> it's just so crazy how they just, you know, change these names and barely change these names. And, you know, you get um, this. Now, I think sometime after this, this was probably 19, 1979. I think a few years later, uh, there might have been a TV movie about uh, Jonestown with uh, Powers Booth as Jim Jones. But this one, I I actually enjoy this. This is, you know, interesting. I think it's, um, if you know the story, you've, you know, uh, read anything about the Jonestown massacre i guess you want to call it tragedy i don't know it's i think it's it's i mean obviously it's an exploitation of film clearly but as you use an insight into what that was like i mean you can go on youtube and you know find videos about the stories of what happened on that day and you see footage of just heartbreaking you know the aftermath of that and just it's mind-boggling what occurred but this is an interesting take on that um i think it's, it's worth it to watch and i said it's one i've been wanting to pick up for a while um and again eight bucks this is the time to do it uh the last of the really cheap ones sos titanic is you know right back to raise the titanic again I'm, i all things titanic uh this is a 1979 uh made for tv movie and this actually has both, uh, there was a, a theatrical cut, I believe. It said it was, I think it was released overseas, maybe. And this is a 4K restoration of the theatrical cut, too. And the AC Master of the TV cut. So you have both versions on here. Um, and you also have a trailer for 1943's Titanic, um, which I think is like a German film, which is one I'm planning on picking up. Along with 1953's Titanic with Barbara Stanwyck, um, which was also nominated for Best Picture, if memory serves. So that's my goal is to try and grab these various Titanic films. Uh, maybe actually for next year's, we just, uh, this past weekend was the 112th anniversary of the sinking of the Titanic. So maybe for the 113th, I can have all these films and watch them and maybe I'll do a video comparing or give my thoughts on all these various films versions of Titanic. But this is, again, um, it was cheap, and it's, you know, a nice set. It's a two-disc set. This is actually rare for a Kino. It's got, or, uh, well, not really rare, too rare, but it's got some nice reverse artwork. Um, I do wish that the, they'd had better labels, though. Um, but the reverse artwork on this one is a little busy for me. <laughs> As you've got this to kind of, I can see there, coming off the side of the ship. I do like this better, just kind of the image of the Ship going down. And they have to watch the theatrical and the... I think, I think the TV cut was like a two-parter, I believe. So I'm not sure. But I'd be curious to check those two out. Now, these last two I got on during the sale were 4Ks. And I picked up space balls for like 15 bucks, 4K. And this is a nice, you know, upgrade for my DVD. And I think everything on here is all the same features. And this actually has reverse artwork as well. You've got that image there. And this is this is a, this is a Blu-ray, a 4K combo. So, yeah, Blu-ray and 4K. <laughs> nice to get that. And then. Face Off with Travolta and Cage. And this is one I I really, really like this movie a lot. I think both actors are just great. And it's actually, a lot of ways, it's low-key Nicolas Cage form. At least in the beginning, this classic Nicolas Cage. When he's, it's I really like it when they switch and you've got John Travolta hamming up the Nicolas Cage part. And Nicolas Cage really bringing down to a John Travolta level how to portray each other. I think it's done really well. And this, too, is a 4K Blu-ray. And I don't know if this had... Oh, this does have reverse artwork. So there's the back. 
but I still like that classic image. And again, that was on sale on the Kino Lover site for $15. And this one was just released. I can't get this paper out. It was just released recently. Um, but you can see I didn't get a slip cover. So <laughs> they, they you know, was a little, not a no big deal. But um, so hoping it's still fairly new. I might still get one, but that's okay. Now, the last one on here, um, which is also Kino Lover, but I didn't get this sort of sale. I got this separate from all that. But it is a 4K Blu-ray of The Boogins. Um, what I know about The Boogins? Nothing. <laughs> Except that name. And as growing up in, in the 80s, this is a title I always remember hearing about, was The Boogins. Um, because it's a weird thing. I even talk about it on In Search of Darkness. And, you know, what the hell's a boogin? <laughs> I don't know. But it's just, a, it's it's an 80s uh video store classic, I guess, in the sense that it's one you always remember hearing about. Kids talk about the boogins. So, and at least in 4K, I had to grab it. <laughs> okay. Whew, that was a lot. <laughs> I've been really busy, as you can see. Besides all this, you know, the one-offs I do on the normal videos. Um, but that is the haul, most recent um, pickups. It's been a lot, but again, I hit these sales and, you know, I go crazy. And I do actually have a, a few more things coming in, hopefully tomorrow, actually, uh, from Grindhouse Video. Uh, they have a new th thing they just started, which is Scratch and Dent section, which is really cool. They've found a lot of limited editions, um, which you're getting, you know, has, has marked down for being, you know, slightly damaged. Uh, I did pick something up from them. I'm going to save that for later because I have something else coming in. From them too, I'm kind of put them together, and what I did get, I'll tell you, I got a slightly damaged something I've been looking for out of print, and they had it, and I don't even know the, the damage is really very, very it's minor, but I'll get more than that at a different different time. Um, so yeah, that's it for now. Um, if you enjoy this and you're still here after almost 45 minutes. <laughs> I thank you. Uh, but click thumbs up, share, subscribe, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know if you've picked up any of these, if you've seen any of these, if you want to see any of these, if you haven't seen any of these. Or just say hi. I'll always take hi. So until next time, Mrs. Chuck saying I will see you on the other side.